Welcome to another edition of Old Baptist Weekly. We're so glad to see you. We hope you came praying. We're privileged tonight to have Elder Mark Quarles with us. How you doing there, Brother Mark? I'm doing well, doing great. Uh, tell us where you're serving at, Brother Mark. Uh, I try to pastor at Providence Primitive Baptist Church in Stringer, Mississippi. You try to? I try to. <laughs> I, think we all, I think that's that, that's what we all try to do. Um, that's right we're well we're uh thankful to have you on we're praying for you brother mark and um with that we're going to turn to elder michael hughes for our prayer thank you brother you would bow with us heavenly father we we come before thee this evening in this capacity we thank thee for this opportunity and to gather with these brethren and with all those that are watching with us and pray that thou would be with this dear brother that's about to speak in thy name and from thy holy word that thou would give him grace and mercy and especially that thou would give us open hearts and open minds O lord to receive thy word according to thy will we thank thee O lord for thy truth and we thank thee for thy son christ and what he means to us mm. and heavenly father this night we're our thoughts are upon those who are on the beds of affliction we pray that thou would be with especially with elder david and his lovely wife sister leslie and all the others that are affected by this virus still and that thou would bless them and grant them healing grace. And we pray that thou would be with all those that are having concerns of this life and the trials and tribulations that we face here in this world. Thou knowest their needs, O Lord, and thou as the great physician can grant those needs, whatever they may be of health and of mind and of, of heart. And heavenly father, we pray now that thou would be with us in this little time together and Bless this brother indeed in, in preaching. Bless each one of us, O Lord, as we look into thy word and speak, that thou would give us thoughts and and words to speak that would be glorifying unto thee and edifying unto thy people, if it be thy will. Have mercy upon us now, O Lord, who we ask in Jesus' name and for his sake. Amen. 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 With that, Brother Mark, the floor is yours. All right. Thank y'all very much. I appreciate the sweet opportunity to be on here with you, brethren, tonight, and uh, sweet opportunity to try to preach the gospel uh, here for a little while tonight. So thank y'all very much and appreciate everyone's prayers very much, knowing uh, that we're in great need of them uh, this evening, as always. If you have your Bibles, I invite you to turn to Matthew chapter 15 where I'd like to begin in verse 21, Matthew chapter 15, 
beginning in verse 21 said, then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him saying, have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. But he answered her, not a word. We see here uh, the Lord Jesus has come, uh, if I estimated correctly, some 70 miles, if you consider it a round trip, some 35 miles to where he was. Uh, he's going to meet with this woman and he's going to go back. Uh, a 70 mile round trip. There, the scripture doesn't record where he did anything else other than meet with this woman where he was here. We have a, a very, very sweet account, I believe here. She comes to the Lord Jesus, uh, very despondent, very heavy, very grieving. And the Bible catches our attention. It says, behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him saying, have mercy on me, O oh Lord, thou son of David, my daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. This woman, you can almost feel the pain and the agony in her heart as she is grieving over the terrible situation that her daughter has been in. It says that she's grievously vexed with the devil. That word grievously means great pain, great distress, great miserableness. That word vex has a very similar connotation. This devil has just been tearing apart her daughter. We see a similar instance where the man came to the Lord Jesus. He was the man that said, Lord, I believe. Help thou mine unbelief. And he described the situation of his son that had had a devil from ever since he was a child. And that word child there actually means an infant. And he said he had seen this devil. Oftentimes we see even in that account where the devil throws this boy on the ground and he's wallowing and he's foaming. We see where the father describes that it came upon him as a child. And that word literally means an infant. And he said, I've oft times seen it throw him into the fire to destroy him, throw him into the water to destroy him. And you get a glimpse in some of these accounts of just how grievous these devils could vex these children. You can hear the agony and the pain almost leap off the page as we read the words of this mother who cried unto the Lord. Have mercy on me. She wanted more than mercy for her daughter. Her daughter needed mercy and she wanted mercy for her daughter. But she said, Lord, have mercy on me. I don't know that I can bear seeing the pain and the agony that my daughter goes through day after day after day. Can you imagine a greater trial or tribulation in your life than watching your young daughter likely uh, have some of the very similar things of the boy that I just described from the book of Mark. Can you imagine? But the Lord Jesus answered her not a word. There's times when we beseech the Lord that for a while he can be silent. Last week on the wonderful broadcast that I was able to watch after the fact and looking at the faith of Abraham. Abraham waited some 25 years for God to fulfill that promise. And in some of that time, I'm sure Abraham had the thought, God is being silent. He trusted that God would fulfill his promise. He trusted that God would stay true to his word. But there was a time where it seemed as if God was silent. 
We see that at the tomb of Lazarus, where they've sent word to the Lord Jesus that Lazarus is grievously ill. And the Lord Jesus stays in the same place where he was until Lazarus had died. And for those few days, it seemed as if the Lord was silent. The Lord doesn't always answer our prayers on our time frame. It's a great blessing when we look in the book of Genesis and we see the servant of Abraham who has gone to find a wife for Isaac and he's praying a very specific prayer unto the Lord. And he said, Lord, let the woman that comes here and I ask her to give me to drink and she also gives my camels to drink. Let her be the one, Lord, that you've chosen for Isaac. We see that sweet time right there where it said, and before he had done speaking, Rebecca comes out. We have times in our life as little children of God that before we even get off of our knees that the Lord has already answered our prayer and what a blessing that he is. But sometimes the answer doesn't come that quickly. Sometimes we must wait for it. Now, I'm going to tell you, I think this woman did an excellent job of waiting on the Lord. When we beseech the Lord, when we beg the Lord and he doesn't answer, what do we do? We wait on the Lord. I want to turn quickly to a couple of verses in the book of Psalms, the first being Psalm chapter 27 and verse 14. Both of these Psalms deal with waiting on the Lord. Psalms chapter 27 and verse 14. Psalm of David, that great chapter ends with saying, wait on the Lord, be of good courage, and he shall strengthen thine heart. Wait, I say, on the Lord. The meaning of that word wait is a very interesting word. (laughs) It doesn't mean wait afar off. It means wait close. It actually has the connotation of being bound together. If you're bound together with something or someone, you are close to who you are bound with. That word literally means to bind together. It means to look for, it means to hope, means to expect, it means to look eagerly for, to wait on the Lord, but not wait afar off, not say, Lord, I'll, I'll come back later and I'll go somewhere else and I'll wait till I get my answer but to keep pressing closer and closer to the Lord as we wait. I love also what it says in Psalms chapter 40, which I think illustrates this very well. The psalmist David again says, I waited patiently for the Lord. That's that same Hebrew word that literally means to bind together, to look eagerly for, to look with hope. I waited patiently for the Lord and he inclined unto me and heard my cry. That word inclined can literally have the connotation of to bend down because you see, David wasn't waiting afar off. David was waiting close right by the Lord, so close that the Lord just bent down and he inclined unto David. Almost get the picture of the Lord of us as a little child and the Lord bends down and leans down unto us, his little child, and he's right there. He is close and he knows the very thoughts and intents of our heart. He knows our very in breathings and our breathings out. He is so close. We wait patiently for the Lord and he can hear even our softest cry. This woman, when the Lord Jesus answered her, not a word, she didn't go away, but she continues to get closer and closer. It goes on and said, and his disciples came and besought him saying, send her away for she crieth after us. 
we see the picture here, the Lord Jesus in the front and then followed by his disciples and then the woman's behind the disciples. And the disciples, quite frankly, are in her way <laughs> and they're trying to get rid of her. She's trying to get closer to the Lord Jesus and they are in her way. I would to God, as we follow Christ, we never get in the way of anyone getting closer and closer to the Lord. The Lord's not giving her an answer. She's come to the Lord beseeching me, Lord, please help me. My daughter's grievously vexed with the devil. The Lord's not answered yet, but she's getting closer to the Lord, but the disciples are in the way. They tell Jesus, send her away for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I'm not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. What does she do then? Does she go away? No, she gets closer. <laughs> then came she and worshiped him saying, Lord, help me. She's now gotten past the disciples. <laughs> She's gotten through the crowd. I'm reminded of what it says in, uh, there when it talks about pressing into the kingdom where it says the law and the prophets were until John, but until that time, the kingdom of God is preached and every man presseth into it. It takes energy to press into the crowd. I'm reminded of that woman with an issue of blood who pressed into the crowd around the Lord Jesus that she might but touch the hem of his garment, she was made whole. May we press closer and closer to the Lord. And when he's not answered our prayer yet, may we not wait far away, but may we wait and be bound unto him and get as close as we can to him. She continues to advance and she's now worshiping at the very feet of the Lord Jesus saying, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, it's not meat to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. And she said, truth, Lord. Yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Some may look at this and saying, well, the Lord Jesus was being difficult with her. He was being hard on her. I think the Lord Jesus was exercising her faith. He was manifesting her faith under his own disciples. His disciples, Peter there in the previous chapter, when they had been in that storm on the Sea of Galilee, and Peter was the only one that had enough faith to get out of the boat. But the faith he had, he began to look all around him and take his eyes off the Lord, and he began to sink. And the Lord Jesus reached down and saved him and helped him. Then he said, why did you doubt? Oh, ye of little faith. He's going to commend this woman's great faith. We all as little children of God, the Romans 12 tells us, as God had dealt to every man the measure of faith. God is the dealer of faith, and God has blessed all of his little children in the new birth with the same measure of faith. But it's up to us how we exercise it. And this woman is exercising her faith. How do we exercise our muscles? We exercise our muscles when they get resistance. And the Lord Jesus is intentionally pushing back some on this woman so that she might continue to push toward him and exercise her faith and her faith may be manifested unto his disciples. What do we see in the exercise videos when somebody's wanting to manifest their muscles? They're lifting weights. They're pushing against the muscles and then pushing against them. You can really see the manifest uh, muscles that they have. He said, she said, he said, it's not me to take the children's bread and to cast it under dogs. And she said, truth, Lord. The Lord Jesus is going to commend her faith. <laughs> The Lord Jesus knows how this ends. <laughs> he knows before it began how it was going to end. The Lord Jesus is not being ugly to this woman. The Lord Jesus 
loved her before the foundation of the world and in the covenant of grace, he agreed with God the Father and God the Holy Spirit that he would come and suffer and bleed and die for this woman. He had loved her for a long time. And he's showing forth the great faith that this woman has. She said, truth, Lord, I am a dog. Truth, Lord, I'm nothing. I'm unworthy of the least of thy mercies. Lord, but I'm yours. I'm a dog. I don't mind taking the place of a dog, Lord, but I'm your dog. I'm your possession. Lord, I belong to you. And Jesus would say, oh, woman, great is thy faith. He only said that a couple of times in the New Testament, one to the centurion and one here. And he says, woman, great is thy faith. Her faith had been shown forth and exercised here in front of his disciples who should have exercised more faith than she did. Why? Because they had more knowledge. Last week, y'all did a wonderful job of talking about the faithfulness of God. And the more we know about God and the more we prove God, the more we understand of his faithfulness and we can trust him even more because there's nothing about him not to trust. The disciples had more knowledge than this woman. They should have had more faith. She had a lesser knowledge. But I'll tell you, she saw herself very small and saw the Lord very big. I would hazard to say she saw him bigger than the disciples did. She saw him as able. That Romans 4 that was mentioned last week, such a great verse that Abraham, he staggered not in verse 20 of Romans 4. or or verse 21, and being fully persuaded that what he had promised, he was able to perform. That word able means powerful. It means mighty. It means strong. This woman sees the Lord Jesus as able, as mighty, as strong, as able to do anything. And she's trusting in him. And she's trusting in his love and in his goodness. Where'd she get that faith? (laughs) Lord Jesus had already spoken unto her with his life-giving voice. He had loved her before time ever began. She had been given unto the Lord Jesus by the Father before God Almighty ever said, let there be light. Here this woman in great faith continues to move closer. She waited on the Lord. And for a little while, the answer didn't come. But then the answer did come. O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. And Jesus departed. (laughs) He had gone there just for that woman. Just to give her her request. That was his intention in going there. And even though for a little while he didn't answer her, he knew he was going to answer her and give her the answer and the desire that her heart so desperately wanted. It's the same with us, little child of God. And during the times when the Lord's not yet given us an answer, may we wait on the Lord. May we do like this woman and press closer and closer and closer to the Lord, never doubting him for one moment. May God richly bless you, my prayer. Amen, Brother Mark. Amen. 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 Wonderful message, man. That was... (laughs) Yeah. Brother brother Jerry, I think you're you're first up. I've been trying to get the the pain in my toes to go away real quick. (laughs) (laughs) uh brother mark what a what an outstanding message indeed um to it to it all i i say certainly amen um thank you brother so many so many thoughts come to to mind as as you were preaching one of the points that you made 
And I, I do not have a, a question per se, perhaps so say something that'll stir you to, to add further to, to your message. But one of the thoughts that you said that just rang out and I wrote it down and circled it and highlighted it, uh, the Lord was not being ugly with this woman or mean with this woman. And I've, I've read those commentaries just like I'm sure you have. But you, you put it so well that the Lord was manifesting her faith to the disciples. Yeah. I cannot say amen louder yeah. than, than that. Um, there, that principle um, is something that, that stirs thoughts in, in my mind because you see it in, in the walk of the Lord's ministry with the disciples on a repeated basis. And in a lot of places, you know, it seems as though the Lord is, well, in a lot of places he is, he's rebuking the disciples for the lack of activating their faith. Mm. Um, I, I, I tend not to be so hard on them because they're walking right. with the Lord, <laughs> right? They, they really weren't required fully to walk by faith yet because he was in their presence. Mm. But Jesus knew there was coming a time when they were going to need that faith. And this is one of the accounts that the Lord used to show them what it looks like. Mm -hmm. uh, you made so many wonderful points. And I would say when we pray to the Lord, are we as persuaded when we pray to the Lord that the Lord is the only source of help? Mm -hmm. Do, do we approach him in that way with that fervency? I loved your point. You know, she prayed for her child. You know, if you're a parent or a grandparent, you know what it is to pray for your children. Uh, that's a different prayer than for just ourselves. But she, she prayed for herself too. And I thought that was a great point. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, she was persuaded that Christ was the only source of help for her child, but she was also persuaded that he was the only source of help for her, for her. to deal with this. And man, that had, to, that had to come so real to her when the Lord was silent for a time. Um, you went to Psalms 40. I waited patiently. You know, that's active waiting. Yeah. And Amen. When I wait, the only activity I typically engage in when I wait is complaining that I'm waiting. <laughs> right? I mean, that's our, that's our nature. Right. Uh, but to, to wait patiently, actively wait on the Lord uh, for that, that moment in that time that he inclines unto us because he's promised that he will. Amen. And, um, it, I, I just so many wonderful, wonderful thoughts, my, my brother. I, I loved it. Um, you know, I, I do think that it's important to, um, to recognize that the Lord, the Lord prepares us in our lives for that, which he knows we are going to need. Mm -hmm. And we may not know that he's preparing us. He was preparing the disciples. Amen. He was, he was full on preparing them for the Amen. time that he would leave their presence. And what mercy that is on the part of our Savior that he prepared those men. And, you know, um, they did learn from him. They did learn the lesson. And, and when they needed to exercise faith, Jesus had prepared them sufficiently to, to be able to do that very thing. What a wonderful lesson, brother. I, I love mm -hmm. you, Mark. I love the gift that God's given you and your exercise of it. Um, it just, it touched my heart deeply. God bless you, my friend. I love you, brother, very yeah. much. I believe, uh, Dad, you're up next. Brother Mark, <clears throat> what, a, <laughs> what a wonderful message. Really, truly, if I say nothing else, just remember that. What a wonderful message the Lord blessed you with. Um, I have a couple of comments that I came to as you were so wonderfully blessed to preach this night. This lady, this sister, was not a Jew, correct? Right. Correct. She was what we would call a Gentile, like all of us on the broadcast tonight. She was not a natural born Jew. 
as I understand it, according to the social and cultural rules of the Jewish society of that time and place, it was strictly forbidden to have any kind of uh, uh, dealings or interactions with the, uh, the Gentiles, especially the Samaritans. Right. And, and I don't know if she was a Samaritan, but <clears throat> so, and I'm sure that I think maybe disagree, but it's okay. But maybe the woman also knew this about Jesus, that he as a Jew would not speak to her, could not speak to her as a Jew. But <clears throat> here's where I think uh, not only was Jesus preparing his disciples for his eventual departure, but he was preparing his disciples for what was going to happen after his departure, yeah. especially as the church took sail <clears throat> into the seas of the Roman Empire. And, you know, ultimately his goal was to include the Gentiles into his kingdom. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> he hadn't legally done the work on the cross yet. But as you so well put it, she was just as much a child of his as one of those apostles. Yeah. So culturally, socially, uh, he shouldn't have done what he did. Right. Right. But as her Lord and master, he had the right to do what he did. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Amen. And he did what he would. Now, this lady also, she shouldn't have come to him, but she... She had to come to him. She did what she had to do. And I think uh, I might be wrong on this too, Brother Mark, but uh, I don't I agree with whoever, Brother Jerry or, or you who said Jesus wasn't trying to, uh, you know, slough her off by what right. he said to her. You know, by first of all, not saying anything and then saying uh, <clears throat> it's, you know, the, it's not meat for the master's food to go to dogs. I think. I could be wrong. I'll, I'll ask you in the in the peanut gallery here. It seems to me he was also saying to not just to her, but to his disciples or, or and whoever else was there. Look at this lady. Look at this woman. Mm -hmm. This woman is not going to let go of her great desire to to to, to have her daughter healed. She's come to the right place to the right person. And she's doing, she's going about it in, with the right m m attitude. Uh, she's not asking anything for herself except just right. to bless her daughter. I mean, that sounds Christ-like to me. And, and I think he's, he's, I wouldn't, I don't believe in over-dramatizing these things, but I can just think that the Lord is maybe smiling a little bit saying, look at this lady. Right. Look at her. Uh, who, have, who of you would even go this far with her? And look what she said. Look at the wisdom. Mm. And the, her faith was great in the exercise of it. But in the way she exercised it, uh, she exercised it in a humility mm -hmm. and in love and in reverence to the Lord and in fear. And I feel like for anybody who wishes to approach the Lord, that's the right way to approach the Lord. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. And Amen. Humility and reverence and godly fear. And the Lord loves a persistent prayer. Yes. <laughs> uh, what was that story about the, the, the importunate widow who went to the judge and wouldn't leave him alone? Right. Right, and Abraham, right. who, who talked to God and said, let me ask you, let me put forth this one yeah. for you and kept going. Uh, there you go, Brother Mark. Here's your Abraham. <clears throat> so I, <laughs> I just love what I love that message. Uh, I hadn't thought about those things until you brought those up and you brought out some color to that that I have sorely lacked in it. And I thank you for it. And God bless you. I love you so much. I love you, brother. Thank you, Brother Mike. Amen. Um, uh, brother Mark. Brother Mark. Um, amen, brother. Uh, and I'm going to do everything I can to exercise the greatest self restraint possible because uh, we'll believe that when it's done. You, yeah. uh, <laughs> yeah, right. Pot kettle. Uh, <laughs> you were walking in some of the thickest cornfield. I think, uh, I've, I've found, I mean, 
absolutely wonderful. And there's so much to this. I want to get just a couple of things. Um, and you already answered. I actually wrote down a question, but you already answered it. In, in your text in Matthew chapter 15, uh, you had said that, you know, his, the intention was to go down, uh, and to heal that woman's daughter, but also to show her faith to the disciples, um, was part of why he was going. And I was going to ask you about that because I believe that I believe one of the many reasons that this happened certainly, you know, was to, to be there to heal her daughter and answer her prayer, but also to, to get the disciples to see. Um, and there's a lot more that goes into that. And brother Mike made a good point because, you know, it's, and I don't, I don't want to be, I don't know what to say. I'm like brother Jerry. I don't like to get on the disciples that much because I'd be stepping on my own toes, but it seems like they had good days and bad days, right? Yeah, yeah, right. You know, and that's what it gets. This seems to me yeah, like, you know, one day, you know, everything's just, just clicking. And I mean, you know, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. And then, <laughs> you know, the next day is, you know, get rid of this woman. She's really irritating, you know, and it's like good day, bad day. Sound well, like the primitive had, Baptist. <laughs> <laughs> well, you, know, you know, they were having a bad day. Sound like the primitive Baptist. Because <laughs> a little bit further down, when Jesus says in verse 32, I have compassion on the multitude, mm. his disciples said, When should we have so, <laughs> when should we have so much bread in the wilderness as to fill so great a multitude? <laughs> you know, it's like <laughs> my goodness, but I can't say anything about them. Yeah. I'd have been saying the same thing. I might've been saying worse, uh, right. but brother Mike Montgomery, you made a really good point that mm -hmm. the lesson learned, the lessons learned by the disciples uh, were certainly for when they were happening, but really they were for when he was gone. Right. Mm -hmm. yeah. I agree. You know, because you said they had him here. They, they, they had him physically present, but there was coming a time that mm -hmm. he would not be, That's and right. they were going to have to exercise their faith. Yep. Uh, so yeah, I agree. Uh, it was, it was for their benefit too. You mentioned the woman with the issue of blood mm. and, and I'm not going to take, I'm just want to step through real quickly and, and folks can comment if they want, or y'all can comment in yeah, please Luke, comment everybody, please. In Luke chapter eight, I think if you go back to verse 24, it's another scene of the Lord doing things for the purpose of doing what needed to be done, but also yeah. on, uh, for benefit of the disciples, verse right. 24, they said, we perish. You know what he says in verse 25? He doesn't say, oh, ye of little faith. You know what he says? He asks a question. Where's your faith? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, and he takes care of that. He calms the waves and, and, and the wind. The very next thing that happens, wild Gadarene. Mm -hmm. <laughs> as soon as he's done with the wild Gadarene, here comes mm. Jairus. A ruler of the synagogue falls down at his feet and says, my daughter is sick. She's about to die. Mm -hmm. And the Lord says, let's go. Third thing that happens is the woman with the issue of blood. Mm -hmm. And if mm -hmm. her showing of her faith isn't a lesson for us today, then I don't know what is. I mean, mm -hmm. she, I believe she mm -hmm. crawled on her hands and knees through the yeah, throng of that, those people mm -hmm. and was convinced that she didn't even need to touch him right. or even be recognized or acknowledged by him. If she could just touch his clothes. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. I mean, Amen. that's faith. <laughs> Right. I mean, mm. that's amazing faith. Right. And she was healed. But I like how he acknowledges her by saying, who touched me? And, of course, the disciples said, everybody's touching you. But he said, somebody's touched me, for I perceive that virtue has gone out of me. And then she, she says, it was me. And then he says, what does he say in, in that place in Lou? Um Daughter, be of good comfort. Thy faith hath made thee whole. Go oh, in peace. Mm. I mean, it's just like, where's your faith? Then the Lord says, "Here, follow me for just a, follow me for just a, a day here, and let me show you where your faith is and where your faith should be." 
Mm-hmm. I mean, Wild Gatterian, you know, the and and then oh, and Jairus. I think it was a benefit for Jairus because right after that happened, one of his servants came and said, Don't trouble the master, your daughter, you know, your daughter's dead. And the Lord said, she <laughs> Sorry, <sleeps. clears throat> the Lord says, Fear not, believe only, and she shall be made whole. Again, he's right. like don't Ooh. let go of your faith. Amen. Right. Thank Keep you. holding on to your faith. Keep wow. using your faith. It's yeah. given to us to use. Yes. And he chided the disciples many times. And I believe on the day of Pentecost, Peter saw it finally. I believe Peter realized of all of those things that happened that it, it just came to his mind. I see, I believe, I understand. And then he exercised his faith. Silver and gold have I none, but such as I have, give, give I unto thee. The name of Jesus, rise up and walk. And then he raised Jairus' daughter from the dead. I mean, amazing lesson after lesson after lesson of faith. Amen. And it's such a good lesson. Yeah, we can sit here and chide the disciples, and we shouldn't because – not only would I have done what they did, I still do what they do, do sometimes. Nice. Amen, Mark. You know, no matter how how frustrating it might be, I still do that. Let me give you one more thing, and then I'll I'll uh, <laughs> I'll turn turn it over before I get too carried away. <laughs> and don't mean to get too personal, but uh, you know, a couple of years ago, our 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 daughter uh, delivered our grandson at twenty four weeks. Mm-hmm. Um, not mm-hmm. a real good chance of survival. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I think he spent the first five months of his life in a NICU, uh, on oxygen. I remember his, he was, he was almost, I guess he was the size of my mobile phone mm-hmm. when he was born, you know? Right. And of course in, in our minds, we knew that there was a chance mm-hmm. that he would not make it. But also in our mind, uh, in faith, we knew that if God's will were such that that, that boy would live. That's right. Yeah. And yeah. we prayed Amen. to that end, and we prayed the prayer of faith, not, not being haughty and saying, right. well, because I'm praying he's going to live, but having Amen. faith in a faithful God and proving him again. Amen. That- and I've told Catherine every time I see that boy, it's mm. it's a testimony to the mm. grace of an almighty God and his mercy and the faithfulness that he has in himself. And then the exercise of our faith to know that there is nothing he can't do. Amen. Nothing he can't do. Amen. And that's, that's the a, lesson that Jesus was showing his disciples. Hey, that's a two. Thank you, brother right Daniel. That's a two. Beautiful. Beautiful. Uh, no, no, good brother Mark. And the, you know, when the centurion came to the Lord Jesus yeah. and said, Lord, I'm not worthy that thou shouldest come under my roof, but speak the word only mm-hmm. and my servant shall be healed. I mean, yeah. whenever Jesus commended faith, he, it was for people who believe just like you just said that God can do anything without, mm. uh, yeah. nothing is impossible for right. God. Right. Yeah. You they know, also see themselves ahead, very small. The centurion saying, "Lord, I'm not worthy." Yeah. The this woman, truth, Lord, I am a dog. Mm. Seeing ourselves very small, but him very big. But yeah. That's that's, well, that's, 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 that's kind of so, a beautiful so sermon tonight, brother Martin. Man, Thank you. Man. Thank God. That's Thank great. God. Amen. Amen. Great, great points. Yeah. You know, it, it makes me just real quick before we go to the next person. It makes me again. Um, feel conviction in myself. You made the point in your message, brother Mark. And in that lesson, the disciples were in the way They got in the way they were between this woman and the Lord and how often our lack of faith gets in the way yeah. of someone who truly. Mm, that's a tough, oh, that's, that's a, a tough one, man. That's yeah. a tough one right there. It's true, and but it's a tough one. It, it is. It, it truly is. I mean, and it's all through scripture. You go to Second Kings and Elisha and, and uh, Gehazi, and Gehazi did the same thing, got in the way. And uh, Elisha said, let her alone. Yeah. Let her alone. <laughs> I mean, it's this. It's the same basic, uh, basic principle there. 
Oh, that's that's just so powerful. Sorry to interrupt. I already had my say. Go next. <laughs> that was a threefer. Man, it was. <laughs> Brother Mike Hughes. Uh, Brother Mark, that was, again, beautiful. Uh, can't say enough about that. And then, uh, Brother Mark Rao, your comments there, I think, uh, really hit some, some notes. Um, you know, I think it's been said you know, from what we, we've learned this, this evening, uh, the Lord was teaching the disciples, and we see a lot of that, especially when, you know, you look at the Gospel of John, the 14, 15, 16 chapters there. He's really getting down to some brass tacks for them. But for us, what a blessing it is that we can see that. Mm -hmm. It's been recorded for us and given to us by the inspiration of the Holy yeah. Spirit. Yeah, yeah. And we have an advantage. We do. We do. We really do. And when you brought up, Brother Mark, about not only this lady, but the man who brought his son to the Lord. I love that, that story over there in ninth chapter of Mark. And he had already gone to the disciples. He had. And he told the Lord, you know, basically they couldn't do it. And so he asked, help us. He didn't ask just for his son. He said, help us. And then the tears come. Lord, I believe, help right. my unbelief. That's that's where we are. That's where we that's, are. And that's I think exactly about James. You know, when you're talking about the prayer of faith, James says the effectual, fervent prayer of a righteous mm, man. Uh -huh. Who can be a righteous man unless Christ has has shed his blood for us. Mm, amen. How can we be effectual and fervent unless we exercise that faith? And sometimes it's waiting. And, you know, to, to believe, uh, as that man said, you know, we get to that point, I think, Lord, I believe, help thou my unbelief. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We just yeah. have to live with that, you know? Mm. We pray by the by the bedside of our loved one that that they might be delivered. And Brother Mark, I'm so thankful for your grandson. And see that evidence of of God's grace. I I think we look at some of these miracles. You know, when he raised the the dead to life, when he healed the 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 lame and the afflicted in an instant, and we think maybe that was only then. Or or Peter, you know, when he said, "Silver and gold have I." none you know and heal that man that only occurred back then but the lord works his miracles today amen yeah, amen he works his miracles today amen. and they're evident to us and and our walk of faith should be strengthened by this to press into the kingdom amen to mm. to be closer and and feel that presence of the lord and, and uh, Certainly, it, I just feel like that, that the Lord blessed you, Brother Mark, with this for us yep. and, and hopefully for all of us on this tonight to, mm -hmm. to feel that, that presence and to feel that need that we might press in. As, as Paul would say, I press toward the mark of the high calling of God, which is in Christ Jesus. And I don't think that was, that was uh, something out there of, of special attainment just for for the apostle, I think that's for us. Amen. That's yeah. for us. Amen. A walk of faith. So, Lord bless you, brother. I, I really appreciate that. Thankful to the Lord for it. Mm -hmm. Thankful to the Lord for his grace and mercy. Thank you, brother. And thanks again, brother Mike, for your good daily texts. They're, yeah. they're a blessing. Thank yeah, you. Yeah, they are. <laughs> blessing. Uh, brother Mark, uh, I, I so we have a group text. <laughs> for our OBW group. And it's been, uh, since Mark's message last week, we've been kind of going a little crazy talking specifically about faith. <laughs> and, uh, and we've, we've had quite a good time. Um, I've learned so much in the past week, things about faith that had not occurred to me. And maybe that's just me. Um, <laughs> But, uh, <laughs> but, um, uh, well, uh, so, so what came to my mind was Luke two verses in Luke 17, when you were talking, uh, 17 verse five, Luke 17 and five. And it says, and the apostles said unto the Lord, increase our faith. 
Mm. And the Lord said, If ye had faith as a grain of mustard seed, you might say unto this sycamine tree, Be thou plucked up by the root, and be thou planted in the sea. That's a fun visual image. And it, mm. should, and it should obey you. The trap here is to take that completely out of context. Mm. And uh, what, what I hope is that we can read the, with, with everything that we've talked about thus far, we can understand that ob- clearly this is not our, our, this power does not come from us. This was this does not originate with us it, it, in in no way. And as a matter of fact, even even it, when we do pray those prayers and those things do happen, we still have no glory in it of ourselves. Right. What the purpose of this is, is to have so much faith in your God that there is nothing in this world that cannot be done by him including Amen. something as absolutely ridiculous as planting a tree in the middle of the ocean mm. that that re- you should take ridiculous out of your uh, spiritual vocabulary because uh, that's what it means to be fully persuaded mm. you, to be fully persuaded I mean just think about what Jesus Christ has done for us that is the most impossible thing that could have ever happened and he did it amen the hardest amen. the hardest thing jesus has ever had to do for you he's already done amen what, what what are these things to him he created the heavens and the earth and all this is still under his control and it always will be yeah and when we submit ourselves to him like that woman like that centurion which admittedly is so, so hard. It's so hard to set aside your nature and to just cast it off. But when you keep focus on your God, one, what he has promised, he is able to perform. And two, I cannot think of a greater foundation for joy in your life to exist. Because if... God is your God and you have absolute faithfulness in him, then just read the second half of Romans chapter eight and be pretty happy about that. Mm. Amen. Um, God bless you for that, brother Mark. Both brother mm. Marks, man. I tell mm. you what. Um, I could I could keep going. I, I actually I just kind of I want to read our entire uh, text chat from the past <laughs> week. I know, right? I know. Right? I just want to go for it. Um, uh, but can, there, can I can I say something? If you're go, if you go ahead, whenever whenever you're ready. Oh no no no! Go ahead go ahead. Uh, the the Mark nine is such a rich chapter. You know, mm-hmm. it starts off with the transfiguration, mm-hmm. and and then it starts on the top of the mountain then it goes down to the valley <laughs> and up on the mountaintop the three apostles it was a time when they just needed to stay silent mm. but they couldn't help themselves they said lord it's good that we're here <laughs> <laughs> and then the moment passed now sometimes we just need to revel and rejoice in the moment amen but when the lord comes down and he and he sees his other disciples are un, under attack, so to speak. I think we need to remember he had already sent those disciples out to do healings. They had cast out demons before this. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They had done the very things that this man was wanting done to his son. He came to the right place, right. but they they uh, they lost their nerve or whatever you want to say. And when the man says, uh, you know, help us. And the Lord, uh, what did the Lord say to him? All things are possible to him that believes. Mm -hmm. And that's when he said the famous saying, Mm -hmm. Lord, I believe, help thou my unbelief. Mm -hmm. I've thought about this for years, brother, and I could totally be wrong. But the the Lord, he was going to heal that boy. That boy was going to get healed. That devil was going to be cast out. Right. I don't think he was saying it would. I'll do it if you believe. I don't think that's what the Lord was no, saying at all. No, 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 that would no. be the wrong thing. I think what 
maybe this taking it too far the other way, but I'll say it. I think the Lord is saying, I believe enough for the both of us. Mm. <laughs> I know you're, you, you've come across, <clears throat> people said they could do it, they couldn't do it. Finally, you came to the right men and they can't do it. Mm. I can understand why your faith is weak, but I'm here and I'm going to, I'm going to do it. I, I believe yeah. for the, no, for the both of us. Mm. And last, last thing I want to say about that, about what the Lord says to his disciples sometimes, look what he <laughs> says to them in that little story. He didn't say, Oh, ye of little faith. Mm -hmm. He says, Oh, faithless. <laughs> yeah. He, in other words, uh, he, he just really says, I've had it with you in a way. That's what he's saying. Where is your faith? You don't apparently you're acting like people who don't have faith. Mm -hmm. Well, I just, sorry, I didn't mean to add all that stuff. I, I really just thought what a, yeah, it is. What a wonderful message we had tonight. Didn't, wasn't it brethren? Yes, uh, yeah, absolutely. absolutely. You know, consider, consider the Liberty that, that this brings to be that persuaded. Amen in your life. Amen. Um, yeah. You know, a lot of times we have a tendency of focusing in on the wrong things uh, when, yeah. when yes. an account that you just preached to us uh, is concerned. We, we look at the roller coaster ride. That's right. And Amen. We, then, we def, then we define ourselves with that ride. Yeah. And we ought not to be on a spiritual roller coaster. No, no, in no. Our lives. Amen. Uh, as a matter of fact, uh, John in First John, I, I love what he's what he says about for, in First John five. First John. Uh, he sets the stage by saying, "These things have I written unto you that believe." So he's writing to specific people on the name of the Son of God that you may know that you have eternal life. That's liberating, knowing that, and that you may believe on the name of the Son of God. So therefore, you can evidently grow in belief. Yeah. They're that believers already, believe. but yes, he wants them right? to be more believers. But then listen to what he says. And this is the confidence. Brother yeah. Mark, that's faith, right? Yeah. That, this mm. is the confidence that we have in him that if we ask anything, anything according to his will, he heareth us. Now, some people will say, let's look at the will of God. Man, I can't figure that out. I have no idea what that means. It's so confining. It's so constraining. No, it's not. No, nope. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> it's uh, liberating. It's liberating. Amen. And, and, then he, and then he says, and if we know that he hear us, we know that he hears us. Whatsoever we ask, we know that he that we have the petitions that we desired of him. You have a guarantee of, of him hearing. And yes. answering your yes. prayer. Amen. Okay. Amen. To Mike, your point. You said the, the Lord knew what he was going to do before he did it. Sure did. Wasn't any question there. Right. Right. Well, the same thing goes for us. Amen. It's so bound up in stuff through a lack of faith and focusing on things that we ought not to focus on. Right. And I, you know, the lesson that you taught last week, brother Mark, and I know we've referred to it a few times. But frankly, it was that good. The Ooh. faith of Abraham, uh, that is, we have that faith. Yep. We have yeah, that we have faith. And it's so liberating when we can come to the place and say, you know what? I'm persuaded this is the only place I can go for help. And I'm going there and no one's going to stop me. I'm going to continue to press to it. Amen. And, and Amen. that is a life of glorifying God. Yeah. Mm, mm, mm. Whew. Man, it's good stuff. Well, we now <laughs> we you know, the thing is there's those name it and claim it so types over there that's right. Yeah. That's right. you go to fifth fifth chapter first John, all you have to do is name it, claim it in the name uh, of the Lord, no. and you'll get it. But that's making that's making uh the Lord into a one trick pony. Uh, no, it's just, no, it's it's, it's so much that's not treating him as sovereign. That's not treating yeah. him as Lord. No, it's so much better than that. <laughs> It is so much better. Yeah, than yeah, it's like you've got power over the Lord. If you just say the right words the right way, you'll that do this. That is not what he's teaching. No, it's not what he's no, teaching. No, sir. No, sir. It's not no. waiting on the Lord. No. That, amen. No, it's right. not. Amen. Right. And if um, we thought like God, we wouldn't be asking for a lot of the things that we do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, Brother Mike Montgomery, he also, Paul says, I think in 2 Timothy chapter 2, 
where he talks about if we deny him, he'll deny us. And, and but then the last statement oh, says, Lord. if we believe not yet, he yeah, abides faithful. He, abide faith. he cannot deny for himself. He <laughs> believes <laughs> enough for us, brother Amen. Mike. That's Amen. a great Amen. point. That's great a really point. great point. Well, we owe it to the Lord, of course, but brother Mark. The Lord bless you to bring the right message at the right time yes. Amen. in the right way. Yes, sir. And God bless you, dear brother. Mm -hmm. Thank oh. you, Albert. It's wonderful. God bless you. Brother Appreciate y'all. I've heard some preaching tonight from numerous of you brethren. <laughs> so I thank the Lord. We do. We certainly thank the Lord for that. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you so much for being with us, brother Mark. Man, man, thank y'all for having me. I appreciate it very much. Yeah. <clears throat> Continue again, Bro brother Mark Rowell. Who do we got on next week? I believe that would be Elder Bill Allen. Oh, brother right. Bill Allen, right. all, right. all right, brother Bill. Brother, brother Bill. Bill, know brother him Bill. and love him. Well, uh, it's just so wonderful that everyone was able to join us tonight. I'm gonna. I got a couple of comments I'd like to read. If that's oh yeah, okay. yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, um. Brother David, I can't pronounce your, your last name, brother. It starts with an R. It says, my youngest grandson weighed 15 and a half ounces and was 11 and a half inches long at birth. He's now seven years old. Praise God. Hey, mm. Amen. John Ivy <laughs> says, my wife is a living, walking miracle of God's almighty grace. Two times she has suffered what could have been a terminal illness, but God, in his rich mercy, restored her. Yeah, that's good. I, I mean, you can just take how many testimonies have we heard like that? You can just add them to Hebrews chapter 11. Okay. You could just add these <laughs> testimonies. You know, the what, brother Mark, what'd you call it? The Faith Hall of Fame? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's not original. That's, that's brother not, Hewlett Bass. Uh, okay. That's you. Uh, uh, copyright Hewlett uh, Bass. Uh, yeah. So I give brother Hewlett the credit on that one. Testimonies of faith are powerful and they're Amen. important. Amen. And, uh, and, and they give hope, I, they, they give hope to me anyway. Um, Amen. And that was David Rougeau. And, and yeah, Rougeau. he says he yeah. gave the, the thank you for uh, giving us the phonetic Rougeau. Yeah, I appreciate Rougeau. that. Thank I you. knew that by the way. I just did not really. <laughs> <laughs> I, I apologize, brother David, uh, uh, Rougeau. I'll get, I'll get it next time. Um, uh, thank but, you for the comment. Though, yes. Thank you for the comment. Yes. yes. Thank you. We really Yep. Feed, we feed off of those really yep. do. really do we enjoy reading them uh and with that i think we'll turn to the lord in prayer uh if you'll bow with us heavenly father we come before you once again so thankful for the opportunity to meet together to worship in your name lord we thank you for this group of brethren that we have and the fellowship that we have the study that we have together lord we thank you for the message that has gone before us, we thank you for your felt spirit in it. We, we thank you for what we have learned in this message, and, and we hope that we can absorb it into our hearts and our lives, that we may live more faithful unto you. We ask that you be with all the sick and afflicted. Lord, please be with all of those that have caught illness recently um, and uh, need a special blessing from you at this time. And all these favors, favors and blessings we ask in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Amen, brother. And uh, and with that, we'll say good night. Good night, everybody. Bye, everybody. Good to see you. God bless. <laughs>